Today I'm in Donegal in Lynn Column Kill and that's pretty much as far west as you can go in Donegal and it's a really good starting point for a really dramatic coastal walk that heads up here up to uh, an old signal tower and then drops down into port uh, beautiful beautiful port um, and then climbs up uh, and drops down again into Glenlock and, and up to the three tops of Sleeve 2A so um, it's a pretty dramatic pretty remote walk uh, one I've done a number of times I've wild camped there maybe four or five times and, and every time it's been an absolute joy This is the uh, Napoleonic signal tower above Glen Column Kill and it stands at about 220 metres and this was built in about 1805 uh, and there was about 80 of them built around the Irish coast uh, by the British and Irish. Uh, that was all uh, I suppose as a reaction to French invasions beforehand. This one here is really really impressive. Um, it's, it's still quite a bit of it intact and you can see it's two stories high everything inside is collapsed and you can actually climb up into a, one of the bottom windows and look in but it's a really really dramatic location um, sitting way up here in this headland with views away up to the north and away down to the south and they used a signal method with flags and balls so that they raised those so the next signal tower could see. Um, pretty impressive stuff. This here's the line of cliffs. Um, that the signal tower sits on and I can just see the top of the signal tower just uh, peeking up there but uh, really really dramatic so that's about 200 meters straight down into the ocean cool stuff and this is Sturrell Head and there's a few guys out there walking along it just past them They're on their way back towards Glen Column Kill So I've come out a wee bit on the stirl ahead, I was inspired by the guys that I've seen um, coming off and I've only come out until a difficult bit so I'm not going any further because I really don't have a head for heights at all man um, but it, even just the bit of come out it gives you a really really great perspective uh, on, on the cliffs and, and what I've walked so far just really really dramatic and on down the coast again it, it gives you a perspective that you can't really get when you're hugging along the coastline and this is really it must be some of the most dramatic coastline in the whole of Ireland absolutely beautiful
Francis Port. And as you can see, there's a, a proper storm beach here. You can just see where all these fantastic uh, white stones are just been piled up and piled up with different storms coming in. Um, really, really beautiful place. I'm now back up at nearly 200 metres so the cliffs that uh, started on today at the signal tower were 220 so I've dropped all the way down and climbed all the way up again and I'll have to drop all the way back down again to Glenlock This is Glenlock Bay and you can see it's uh, pretty spectacular looking so it's got a massive big storm beach and it, when you're down on it it's, it's banked up maybe I don't know 20-30 feet just uh, again the steps of pebbles where um, it's been washed up by different storms and there's a couple of nice sea stacks down there as well. That's where I've come down from. So I've went along the top of the cliffs and dropped down to here. And you can see the storm beach is just down below. And that's where I'm heading, just down here. That's Glenlock. So I'll probably camp down there near the river somewhere. I'm set up here um, at Glenlock for camp for tonight and again the, the three important things I think is that I'm close to water and I just went and got some water from the Glenlock River and that's good clear water I've, I've actually just drunk that straight from the river before um, the next thing is a view and again <laughs> a really really cool view um, I'm not sure it could be better. Uh, good, good ground. Um, so it's it's nice, nice and dry, and um, the grass is fairly short. So 
of those three things is what I'm at for camp tonight. But the only thing is midges, so I, I've sort of locked out tonight. Um, the midges, the midges are, are, are out. Uh, the breeze, the breeze has died down. It just, it just sort of wafts in now and again. But um, when I was on Aram Moor, uh, there was a steady breeze uh, right, right through the night, and I even slept with the, the door of the tent open. Uh, and there wasn't a midge or fly in sight, but uh, it, I suppose this is going to make up for that, isn't it? You know. Morning from Glenlock in, in Donegal. So it's turned out to be a beautiful morning. Uh, sun's out, midges are out. <laughs> but if I keep moving, I think walking around to, to stop the midges has probably doubled the amount I've walked. <laughs> so uh, it's good, midges are good for exercise. Um, loads of midges about last night. And flan ants as well, there's loads of flan ants as well. Um, so I just bailed into the tent, didn't even put the sleeping mat down, I uh, just couldn't be arsed. So uh, it, was, it was quite hard ground I was laying on last night, it was a wee bit uncomfortable, but I think I had a fairly decent night's sleep. I was a bit knackered, uh, so that probably helped. Uh, but this morning just absolutely beautiful, and at the noise. If you can hear it, the noise of the waves, because it's just, um, there's just a cliff just down there. And I had that sort of with me all night, which was really, really cool. Um, there was a few weeks off the wind during the night, but obviously that all disappeared for, for whenever I had to get up this morning. And uh, I was dreading getting out, but I was just going for it. And then it was sort of okay. So, um, yeah, I need to get sun cream on again today, I think. Um, it's, it's ready, feeling absolutely roasting. But it's a, a cracking spot for camping here, absolutely cracking. As ever, leave no trace. This is where I was camping last night. And absolutely nothing left here. Everything packed up, including all the rubbish, the way it should be. Where would you spoil such a beautiful place like this? Why would you? Changed my, my plans slightly. Usually, when I do this walk, it's following the coastline all the way around up to the top of uh, Sleeve 2 Far West Top. So it was a lovely climb up uh, along ever higher cliffs, really, really impressive. But I've been thinking it over, and what I'm going to do today is follow the Glenlock River up from the coast as, as it goes inland and it goes up to uh, Corrie Lake. Loch Anifrin, but I've never been there before, so I'm going to walk the river up, uh, go up to the Cory Lake, see what it's like, and then probably climb up to the, uh, the far west top from there. That's a plan anyway, 
and we'll, we'll see how that goes. There's some lovely wee deep pools of water here and I have seen fish jumping in some of these pools before and man there's plenty of food for them with all these midges. There's an old ruined cottage here, just up towards the, the head of uh, Glenlock. And uh, very, very remote. And I think the poet writer Dylan Thomas actually stayed here in the 1930s. Uh, probably to get some headspace and, and do some writing. Uh, it's in pretty, pretty ruinous state. Uh, I was here well over 10 years ago. And my memory is that there was actually furniture and like clocks in the wall and stuff. I'm not sure that's just my memory, but but I think I am right. So over that time, it's obviously deteriorated quite a bit. Well, if you are coming in here, just watch the prints in the door, because uh, I just banged my head on it um, and sort of went to clatter. And uh, that's the result. Uh, I don't think my head hurts any more than it usually does, but... <laughs> Going to some really nice wee waterfalls as I uh, head up the higher ground towards the Corrie Lakes, and this is the river dropping down steeply. Beautifully peaceful up here. Not a sound except for the, the gurgle of water as the river sort of leaves the uh, leaves the head of the lock. You can get a better view of the locks now. Uh, there's actually three. There's that wee guy over there. Um, but absolutely stunning location up here. Not sure if you could wild camp. Uh, I haven't seen too much decent ground. It's a sort of thick heather. But if you, if you were able to find somewhere, it'd be uh, pretty amazing. And that's back down to the coast there. You can just see all, everything you can see there just drops straight off down uh, along the cliffs. Shore breeze, and it's really, really welcome because it is absolutely roasting today. What you can see is the, the air hits the cliffs and rises up, uh, probably, I don't know, maybe 300 metres. It's producing um, some sea mist, and that was rolling in yesterday evening. I was actually blanketing the, the tops up here. Hopefully, it doesn't do that today so I can have my views. But again, it's just really, really cool the way the weather works. This is Loch Awali. And this is um, on the way between Sleeve Tree, Far West Top 
and sleeve to the west top. There's actually two locks and they're fair size so probably uh, a good source of, of water if needed. So well, Matt's sleeve to the west top, and it was about two and a half kilometres walking from the far west top to the west top, but it was pretty good going, um, fairly fairly steady uh, in terms of gradient, and you could get a good pace going. So this is looking down uh, to Loch Croke Ballock Down, and that's sleeve to the or Minicurin itself. And that's a really cool uh, cow lock nestle down in there. And you can see over there, that's Makara Strand. So some really, really cool uh, sands and, and beaches there. And there's caves there too, which are, are really good to explore. So I'll be dropping down and then contouring up or following up along the, the top of the mountain up to the trig pillar and then dropping straight down and there's a, a waymarked trail I'll be picking up down at the bottom which will take me back towards Glen Cullum Kill. So this is the last top of the day of the walk and there's Loch Crook Ballach Down that we looked at uh, earlier from over there and that is Leave to the west top and way way in the distance that's the far west top and you might even be able to see a way over there uh, towards Stirl Head that I was on yesterday um, but again I just this sort of Cory Lock has I've been following it sort of all the way around and it's it's a really really cool lock um, the top is just up there and you can see there's a, a trig pillar and uh, a, a lovely fence just beside it. Um, in fact, the only fences I've, I've encountered the whole trip, apart from a few at the cliff edges, have been running down. There's a fairly new fence running down off the southwest top right down to the lock. Um, that's quite a substantial fence with no proper uh, crossing point, so it was quite difficult to cross it. Um, and then there's a bit of a fence here up at the summit. So that's me uh, on the way down and there's a bit of a road and track walk to get me back to Glen Cullum Kill and, and I'll be thankful for that. Uh, I forgot my wash gear and I don't know if I should say this or not but I haven't, I haven't washed in three days. <laughs> um, but even that didn't keep the midges away. So <laughs> So I don't know what that says, so yeah, but that's, that's me. That was a long old drop, uh, about uh, 300 metres or a thousand feet. So just steady drop drop. Uh, I'm now down and I've joined on to the Column Kill Way. And I've walked this, this section before and it goes uh, down along this river and it'll bring me down to a track and, and then onto the road. So this is uh, cool for walkers. Um, not often you see stuff like this but I suppose it is a waymarked trail and you've got the stile and you've the fence covered and you've a wee bridge on the other side so that, that's quite cool to get me across here. And this is one of the trails at Tough Souls, Ellie and Carl, that, that they cover. They've walked all the national waymark trails in Ireland. Uh, and it's a really fantastic resource for anyone uh, wanting to walk those trails. That's me just about back at the car. And uh, the very unglamorous, maybe two and a half hours of road walking to get me back. But 
I suppose that's a payoff whenever that outward journey was along that magnificent coast. Um, I think my feet, I've got just enough heat to maybe heat about 10 houses. And I can't wait to get these boots off and get in the car, man. Um, but it's an absolutely great couple of days walking up along this stretch of uh, Donegal coast. Absolutely beautiful. Um, as stunning as anywhere in the world, I think. And uh, the first wee bit was quite busy up to port. Uh, and there were some people coming back from Glenlock as I was heading out. But uh, since then, um, didn't see a soul. Uh, not a soul. Uh, really nice wild camp as well, despite the midges. I suppose everything goes together to make a trip memorable, and, and midges are part of that, so good stuff.